Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Watts and I'll be giving you a tour of the new features and developments that you can expect to find in Toolbag Update 4.05. With this update, we've really focused on improving the 3D painting tools. So with no further ado, let's dig into the updates to our texturing suite. Symmetry is a powerful technique for speeding up asset creation processes, and so we've added a comprehensive symmetry feature to our texturing suite. Symmetry can be accessed in the tool settings. To enable symmetry, tick this checkbox. By default, it will be mirrored on the X axis, which is indicated in the viewport with this plane. You can toggle between the three axes easily with Shift and V on your keyboard. We've also added in the option to use radial symmetry, which can be accessed via this drop down menu, or toggling V on the keyboard. Upping the count will increase how many times your stroke will be repeated around the mesh. But there's one really cool thing I need to show you before we move on, and I think this is a game changer for symmetry tools. If you go back to the axes drop down, you might have noticed there's a custom option. This powerful feature allows you to set your symmetry plane based on either your object or geometry alignment. If I select geometry, I can then select edges or faces to act as the center of my symmetry plane. And while this demo does show advanced placement in use with radial symmetry, it can be used with mirrored symmetry too. Once aligned, I can then fine tune it further with its own gizmo. This is super powerful and gives our users so much freedom in applying strokes or stencils to awkward or complex surfaces. The second update I'd like to showcase is that users now have the ability to use stencils. Toolbag 4.05 allows users to load and position images and textures in the viewport to act as a screen space mask. To access the stencil settings, ensure you have one of the four application tools selected. Navigate to the tool settings and you can see there's now a panel for adding a stencil. You can load in your own image by clicking on the empty box. You can see the stencil is now visible in the viewports when I hover over them. Hitting Z on your keyboard will toggle the stencil on or off. Obviously this is way too big, so you can continue holding Z and then drag the right mouse button to scale the stencil. Currently the stencil is repeating, which we do not want, so I can disable this by deselecting the wrap checkbox. To rotate the stencil, again, we keep Z held down and use the left mouse button. You can also hold shift here to use angle snaps. My alignment is still off, so I can use Z and my middle mouse button to pan the stencil image around the viewport. And it's worth noting any of the transforms can also be applied manually in the stencil settings. You might have noticed that the stencil disappeared when I painted, and that's because you have the option to hide the stencil while you're painting if you find it too distracting. You can see that using the stencil in combination with layer masks and a layer height information, I've created the impression of a beveled logo on the surface here. Continuing on with our look at the stencil tool with a different example, you can see we've also added a couple of sliders to control the application of the image. You can invert a stencil's black and white values with this droplet icon on the right. Adjusting the fade value will fade out the edges of where the stencil tiles, whilst the blur slider will, not surprisingly, blur out the image details. You can also adjust the brightness and the contrast, which can be useful when working with images that contain mid-value greys. Third in line and just as exciting, Toolbag 4.05 sees the introduction of Lazy Mouse. Lazy Mouse can be applied to your brush or eraser tool in the brush tip panel. Without Lazy Mouse enabled, you may sometimes find that brush strokes can have shakiness 
from the sensitivity of your mouse or stylus. If I set the lazy mouse amount to maximum, you can see that as I draw, my stroke is slowed and smoothed out. There's a halo around my brush tip, indicating the length of delay. This can assist massively when drawing curved or circular lines. Using a lower intensity setting can help reduce natural shakiness in your brush strokes, especially if you're using a mouse input. And last, but certainly not least, is the addition of seamless 3D blur. If we take a look at the blur process in this older version of Toolbag, you can see that there can be some nasty artifacts with edge glows or tiling textures along the edges of UV islands. This is because the blur would not account for the UV splits. However, switching to Toolbag 4.05, Users have the option to enable seamless blur, in which the process is applied in 3D space and creates seamless results across UV splits. This will be especially huge for any artists who rely on triplanar projection a lot, especially when masking with grunges or noise, like on this statue. The first new rendering feature I'd like to show off is going to be a big hit with vehicle artists or anyone who works with clear coat materials, and that's the new glint shader. Glint shaders are used to add a flaky metallic or sparkly effect under your clear coat layer. The glint shader can be found in the reflection settings in your material. If I click on this arrow, you can see I have the option to change from the default reflection type to glint. This will then reveal additional sliders where you can change the intensity, the density of the flakes, and the scale of the noise used to create the effect. An individual glint mask can also be supplied. Glint shader functionality has also been added as a project map for the texturing suite, meaning you can author both the aforementioned glint mask and a glint roughness map. The glint mask is useful if, for example, you're making a vehicle that is entirely on one texture map and has other surface types included that you wouldn't want the glint shader to affect. Next up is the revamped refraction shading module, which is now easier and more practical to use. If we turn refraction on, we can see that the absorption and density sliders have now been consolidated into this depth slider. The depth value informs the renderer how opaque the interior of the object should be considered, and so the lower the value, the shallower the refraction occurs. Increasing the value will make your refractive material lighter and clearer. Depth color can also be set by the user. Additionally, we've added the option to supply texture maps for both the depth and scatter values should you need a more bespoke application of either. These textures can be authored in Toolbag's texture projects by adding scatter and refraction depth to the project maps. The third new property I'll highlight is the roughness bias adjustment, which allows users to modify the roughness of the refraction independently of the reflective surface. With lower values, refraction is less rough than the surface reflection, and with higher values, it is more rough which is useful for adding a waxy, frosted or milky look to refractive materials. We introduced a lot of physically accurate features in our last update, and so it only makes sense for us to continue extending that into other aspects of Toolbag. As such, we've introduced the ability to colour your lights via temperature. To do this, click on any type of light object in your scene and click on this checkbox here. This will now allow you to set the temperature of your light in units of Kelvin. As an illustrative example, daylight with bright blue skies will measure around 10,000 degrees Kelvin and produce a cool tint. 
In comparison, warm light sources such as candlelight will have values of around 1900K. Pure white light will sit somewhere in the middle, typically about 5000 Kelvin. While you can find helpful charts for values online, we have included presets in this drop down menu here. The temperature is most realistic when the light colour is set to pure white, but you still have the option to combine tinting your light colour with a temperature value as well. I want to pivot a little bit and show off some additional post effect settings that we've added. To access these, click on any camera in your scene. You'll notice in the post effect panel, we've expanded the amount of options. Adjusting the highlights will affect the brightest part of your images, like these reflections on the marble floor. On the other hand, the shadow slider will adjust the darkest values. The effect of adjusting the shadows is noticeable on these dark doorway areas. Midtones, as the name suggests, lie between the two and will affect the medium tonal values. Adjusting these values independently allows users to bring out detail that has been lost in either blown out or underexposed shots. As for clarity, this handy little slider lets you adjust the micro contrast or local contrast in your image. While we still have the sharpen slider to add a crispness to renders, clarity differs in that it focuses on the midtones of your image and applies a very soft sharpen across a large radius. Dropping clarity to zero produces a very soft image. Increasing the value, therefore, is a useful tool to remove any unwanted softness in your renders and will increase the crispness of texture detail. The next feature I'll quickly take you through is the addition of more lighting-based render passes. One of the most noticeable additions is the real-time ambient occlusion render pass. This allows users to composite the AO on top of their existing renders during the post-processing stage, which can help add more dynamism to images. Toolbag 4.05 also sees the addition of complete lighting, diffuse lighting, and specular lighting render passes. These are great resources for really inspecting the lighting setup of your scenes and debugging any issues. Here, I'm just cycling through them with the period and comma keys on my keyboard. To allow users to incorporate these into their post-processing, these passes have also been added as render object outputs. At the bottom of the render settings, you can choose which passes you'd like to render to disk with the add new button. There are also additional settings for each render pass which can be accessed by clicking on the gear icon next to their name. Another AO related feature that has been added is ray traced ambient occlusion for raster mode. In previous toolbag versions, the raster version of real-time AO relied on screen space calculations, which is a faster but less accurate method. We've now added the option to use the more accurate ray-traced AO as well. You can see this version adds a lot more dynamism to the scene. You can specify the ray distance for the ray-traced ambient occlusion if you want to limit its effect across the scene. And as with screen space mode, you can still specify a custom AO color as well. It's a feature that many users have requested us to bring back and we're pleased to announce that light baking has returned in toolbag 4.05. Inside this bake project, if I configure my maps, you can see there's now four additional options added to the lighting section. Complete, Diffuse, Specular, and Indirect. Once enabled as bake maps, we can use Toolbags Baker to bake lighting information from the scene to a 2D texture. Previewing the maps will show you their effects. Diffuse lighting will only bake the colour information from lights reflected by rougher surfaces, whereas specular lighting in comparison will bake the lighting information that has been reflected by smooth, shiny surfaces. Indirect lighting will only bake the bounced lighting data, like global illumination and reflections. 
If you want the effects of all three combined into one texture, you can achieve this with complete lighting. As of Toolbag 4.05, we'll be supporting the import and export of universal scene description files to bring our users modern support for material and lighting information. USD export can be found in the newly revamped export window. You can access this in the file dropdown or using Shift, Control and E on your keyboard. This new dialog window allows users to easily export their scenes in a variety of formats. USD is the first option, but we've also included support for Marmoset viewer files, scene bundles, GLTF, Collada, and the standard FBX and OBJ. We wanted to allow our users to easily import and export entire scenes in USD. So to achieve that, we've actually extended the USD format to include our own proprietary data. This gives users the option to include toolbag specific scene components when exporting USD content, and then allows seamless re-importing back into toolbag. Additionally to this, you can also decide which geometry aspects you want to apply or preserve to the meshes in the scene. You'll see in this fourth panel that there are options for file references and there's an important distinction to note. Keep paths will use reference paths to the files that you've used locally and won't save out any copies of assets. In comparison, include copy will write out duplicates of all the files used in the toolbag scene. The scene's metadata can be included in the USD file if you opt to keep inline data or you can export a reference file, which will generate a separate file with all the aforementioned information. So we're now at the conclusion of our update video. I've taken you through all of the fantastic new features coming out with Toolbag 4.05, from new symmetry and stencils to USD support, light baking, glint shaders, and I can't wait to see what our community creates with them. Thanks for tuning in, and until we see you next time, take care.